Thanks so much, Ira. Uh, we are joined now by Peter Bechtold, a professor of political science at Portland State University. He's the former director of Near East and North Africa Studies at the Foreign Service Institute at the U.S. Department of State. Why don't we start there? Uh, what does this latest incident do to the psyche of the people in Germany? As Ira pointed out, we've seen a spate of attacks, uh, the mass shooting, the axe attack, and now this latest incident. Um, it must be disquieting for the people of Germany. Well, it certainly is. And the uh, government of Bavaria, as well as the federal government, have made statements trying to calm the situation and pointing out that the three major events in Bavaria are uh, somewhat dissimilar. Let me ask you about uh, this suicide bomber. He was trying to get asylum. That was denied. Uh, I was reading today that most asylum seekers are rejected. Uh, what are we learning about Germany's refugee policy? Well, uh, Germany has been receiving asylum seekers for almost half a century, uh, uh, first from Eastern Europe and then later from uh, Afghanistan. And uh, that was during the times of the wars among various warlords. Uh, and uh, more recently from um, uh, Syria, Iraq, um, as well as Africa. and. Uh, in order to receive asylum, one has to prove uh, political persecution and not um, uh, economic improvement. And um, there has been a backlash in conservative areas. And one needs to be careful, and I all want to tell myself to be careful, because only three cases do not make a story. But Bavaria is the single most conservative area, and the opposition to asylum seekers in Bavaria has been greater than in other parts of the former West Germany. It is also great in the former East Germany. You know, it's interesting you bring that up, Peter, uh, because uh, Germany had this uh, welcoming uh, towards migrants. Um, and, and I was speaking to a journalist uh, from Germany on Friday about of course, the shooting, this is a different incident, but he was saying that he thinks that that's likely to change, this welcoming uh, attitude. Do you think there's going to be a shift in sentiment there in Germany? Well, there is a shift in sentiment among the uh, conservatives on the right wing. There is a new political party that you may know about. It's called the Alternative for Germany. And uh, they are similar to the conservative uh, parties in France, Austria and some other European countries, and they play on the fear of foreigners uh, coming in. Uh, they are small minorities, uh, smaller than in the United States, but still um, they are significant, and the government has to take notice of this. And uh, your audience may not be aware of the fact that the Bavaria uh, considers itself to be sort of semi-independent from the rest of Germany because they call themselves a republic, much as the state of Texas does in the United States, and their party is a coalition party to uh, Chancellor uh, Angela Merkel. And uh, they are much more conservative than the rest of the Christian Democratic Union. Peter, uh, how would you grade so far the government's response to these uh, incidents? Well, on the technical side, it seems to have been very good, because they've managed to find out where the uh, individuals came from, uh, what connections they've had, uh, what uh, Facebook entries they've had, um, and um, uh, who else they seem to know. I checked with German media this morning once I found out uh, your invitation, and uh, the local media as well as the national online media. And they seem to be quite professional about it, and they seem to make sure that the population doesn't overreact. And you were talking about that. Uh, I know the Interior Secretary said that uh, it, it is safe and robust in Bavaria. But, but as you know, Bavaria is a, is a tourist area. A lot of people go there. Do you think it's going to have any impact? And again, as you said, it, this does not make a story. But people see a, a negative story and another one, and, and then suddenly they start to piece it together. Do you think it's going to have any impact on the tourist industry, on the economy? Well, it, it, it might for the short time, although there was no connection between um, the uh, attackers and uh, the German economy. Uh, unlike in the Middle East, where, for example, in Egypt, um, some terrorist attacks were clearly designed to prevent the government from benefiting from tourist dollars. That would not be the case in Bavaria. But the general fear of foreigners has inched up uh, a notch or two. And um, 
you know, the distinction that one must make is between refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, Germany has been very open to refugees, and asylum seekers is a separate case, and in, it, it requires legal proceedings. And you know, the person who committed this awful act yesterday was turned out, as your reporter said, but he was allowed to stay in country because he could not return to his country of origin, Syria, according to German law, because Syria is in a state of war. And so he was told that he would be sent to Bulgaria as soon as the papers were ready. And he apparently flipped out. And uh, with your permission, I would like to add another comment. And that is, we hear so much that they pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. One has to be very careful here. A lot of people are inspired by what they think the Islamic State is, but there is no evidence whatsoever, according to the authorities in Germany or even in the United States, that they were recruited by the Islamic State. They simply thought, well, you know, they're fighting against uh, people, so why don't I do the same thing? The Munich uh, shooter who killed the most people uh, three days ago um, he was inspired by Breivik, the Norwegian. Uh, he wanted to kill Muslims, and he succeeded because most of the people who died in Munich at the uh, McDonald's were, in fact, Turks that had been invited by him on a Facebook page. So they are three very different cases. That's a very important distinction to make because there really is no linkage between the three. And as you pointed out, uh, uh, obviously, the, the shooter the other day had some mental instability. That seemed to come out uh, rather clearly. And, and, you know, sometimes we lump it in as a terrorism act. Obviously, it's more of a mass shooting. So it's good to make those distinctions. Uh, any other observations? Well, this morning, uh, uh, a, another person originally from Syria also seeking asylum uh, working in a uh, fast food place, apparently had a relationship with a uh, woman from po Poland, 25 years older than he, and he killed her with a machete. And this, uh, again, because of his origin, was blamed on let's not have these foreigners come in. But they were both foreigners, and it was purely a personal matter having to do with a relationship gone bad. Um, uh, you know, the police has to be allowed to do their work. And uh, generally speaking, they do excellent work. And nowadays, internationally, there's close cooperation between the German police, the other European Interpol systems, the American FBI, the anti-terrorism centers with whom I used to work a bit. And they do excellent work. And that is the only way that one can approach these things and not allow extremist politicians to try to make hay from the fear of anything foreign. Because if I may say, Mike, uh, if you remember, the FBI announced at the end of December that there were 354 mass attacks in the United States, two of them by Muslims and 352 by others. We're going to have to Yet leave it the there, Muslim Peter. I'm, I'm afraid we're yeah. out of time. But that's a very important point to make. And, and thank it's, you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks Thank so much for joining for us in Portland.